The Department of Natural Resources manages more than 5 million acres of public land in Minnesota. These state lands provide recreational opportunities, habitat for wildlife, clean air and water, and raw materials that support a diverse natural resource economy. Over half of state lands are managed forests where timber harvest is used as a tool to improve habitat, maintain forest health, and reduce wildfire risk. Managed forests also provide revenue for the state and school trust, as well as jobs for more than 64,000 Minnesotans. For about the last 10 years, the DNR has offered for sale around 800,000 cords of timber each year. This harvest level is supported by internal strategic planning efforts and implementing sound natural resource principles. Because state, private, county, and federal forests are dynamic and always changing, the DNR has been asked to perform an analysis to assess the long-term sustainability of increasing harvest to 1 million cords each year from state forest lands. If the analysis shows that 1 million cords per year is not sustainable, the department will identify an alternative sustainable harvest level. This analysis considers the broad scope of forest values, including timber productivity, wildlife habitat needs, retaining or increasing forest biological diversity, protecting water quality and quantity, maintaining forest community health, and supporting forest-based economies. To complete this task, a project team was identified, including representatives from the DNR divisions of forestry, fish and wildlife, and ecological and water resources. A stakeholder advisory group was convened and meets regularly with the project team. They ensure a broad range of public and private interests are represented in the analysis. The advisory group includes representation from conservation organizations, timber industry, academia, tribal resource managers, and county and federal land management organizations. The DNR sought proposals and selected a private contractor, Mason, Bruce, and Gerard, to provide an objective analysis. They bring an experienced team that has completed this type of analysis for several public and private interests. Let's take a moment to meet Mark Rasmussen of Mason, Bruce, and Gerard. He'll explain how they approach the analysis and what the strategic planning effort tells us about timber harvest on state forest lands. Hi, I'm Mark Rasmussen. I'm a principal at Mason, Bruce, and Gerard. We're a natural resource consulting firm headquartered in Portland, Oregon. We have foresters and biologists and hydrologists and spatial scientists and so forth. I work in the forest planning group and we help uh, land managers prepare forest plans uh, across the country. We work for federal, state, private, and tribal land managers. For this project, DNR asked us to help them with an assessment of the forest land managed by the DNR. For this assessment, we build a forest management model where we got data from the DNR about the uh, resource and the yields and the future conditions under different management scenarios. We build a model that uh, builds scenarios based on different objectives and different uh, constraints placed on the model. For example, we, we have one scenario where we ask what's the maximum sustainable level of harvest from these lands. We have an, another scenario where we're asking how close can we get to a certain set of goals for native plant communities or a diversity index or things of that nature. And for each of those we want to know about the forest conditions and we want to know about the timber harvest outputs over a long period of time. With this model we can develop different scenarios that show how the forest might be managed if you were to emphasize one resource over another and what the consequences and long-term conditions are of the forest. For example, we, we have a scenario where we're maximizing the sustainable level of timber harvest over the long term. And we can then see what the impact of that is on different outputs. We can also set up the model to uh, get as close to a set of native plant community goals as it can and understand what the timber harvest levels are associated with that. We have another alternative, for example, that where we're uh, maximizing the uh, biodiversity across the forest, and, and we want to understand what the timber harvest levels are with that, are with that, and also what the impact of that is on native plant community goals, for example. This model is a strategic model, so it um, it gives us the long-term consequences of short-term actions. It's not an operational model, so we're not trying to uh, design timber sales for next year. It also doesn't take into account um, uh, events in the future uh, like fire and, and windstorms and that kind of thing. We're not trying to predict that. This allows us to give 
DNR a, um, an idea about the range of opportunities that are available from this, uh, from this land. Now, the model doesn't tell us what's best. It just tells us the best way to achieve uh, different sets of objectives. Ultimately, it, it's DNR that will have to look at, at all the options and, and decide for what set of purposes they want to manage these lands. The results of this project will show that there's a lot of flexibility and DNR uh, has a wide range of choices available to them as they make final decisions about how to manage these forests going forward into the future. As you can see, a great deal of work is being done to ensure the future health of Minnesota's state managed forest lands. The information from this analysis is in discussion with Commissioner Landwehr and his staff. Before a decision on the harvest level from state administered forest lands is made, we would like to hear from you. Please find the analysis posted on the Sustainable Timber Harvest Analysis webpage. We would like your feedback on the approach. Were our assumptions reasonable? Are any results unreliable in your estimation? The report. Is it understandable? Is there anything presented in a way that is unclear? Was the analysis missing anything major? We had to make decisions along the way to create a functioning forest model and meet deadlines, but we tried to be as inclusive as possible. Public comments will be taken through December 30th. You can participate through an online questionnaire. The project team will review all comments and incorporate them as appropriate into a final analysis. Based on the analysis and team recommendations, Commissioner Landwehr will deliver his decision to Governor Dayton by March 1st. Thank you for your time and sharing our commitment to healthy, sustainable forests in Minnesota.